Here, we see a typical modern design. Starting from the left, you can see that water and gas monitoring wells are installed. These enable the engineer to monitor the impact of the landfill to the surrounding environment. Water is a concern from the earliest stages. Runoff drains around the circumference are important even during the construction phase. Leachate or hazardous liquids accumulate. The landfill is built with a sophisticated lining which includes a leachate collection and removal system. The leachate runs into a collection sump, which you can see at the bottom right of the diagram. From here, it can be removed from the system and treated. Further drainage is often required underneath the sealed landfill. This manages the flow of existing groundwater, preventing it from impacting the system. The key feature of the landfill is the barrier, or seal, that keeps its contents separate from the surrounding environment. This is provided first by the compacted soil of low permeability, that is, clay. Geosynthetic liners are then used on top of that layer. When the landfill cell is full, a capping layer is built over the top. This layer must control the amount of rainfall entering the system and control the exit of gas from the system. Liquid must not be allowed to accumulate inside. Gases are generated from the decomposing waste and must be able to escape. Engineers focus on lining and drainage when designing landfills. A new landfill cell will require specific design for the base and side slopes. Lining and drainage considerations are different in both these areas. When the landfill is decommissioned, these functions, lining and drainage, must be considered again in the way they apply to the cap. Landfill lining systems. Lining is essential to reduce leakage from the landfill. Prior to geosynthetics, the most common lining material used was compacted clay. Allowable leakage rates are so low that an extremely thick layer of compacted clay would be required. Such a thick layer takes up valuable space that could otherwise be used to receive the waste. Modern municipal landfills will generally use a lining system made up of two components, a geomembrane plus either a compacted clay layer or a geosynthetic clay liner, GCL. The choice of compacted clay or GCL depends on the availability and quality of clay. Modern environmental protection guidelines focus on performance. They specify the maximum seepage allowable. For example, in Victoria it is less than 10 litres per hectare per day. Lining system selection is governed by this performance standard. The measure for a lining's impermeability is the K-value, or hydraulic conductivity. You can see that a GCL and a geomembrane is two orders of magnitude more impermeable than a compacted clay layer with a geomembrane. This translates to a dramatically reduced leakage rate. If the geomembrane slash compacted clay layer combination leaks at one litre per hectare per day, then the geomembrane slash GCL combination leaks at only 0.2 litres per hectare per day. The more intimate the contact between the two layer components, the less opportunity there is for water seepage in between. Modern landfills almost always use a geomembrane. The choice of compacted clay versus a geosynthetic clay liner to complement the geomembrane is a key design decision. 
Clay may be locally available and therefore have low transport and purchase cost. However, the engineer must take care that it has the properties required for landfill sealing. As well as sourcing costs, installation costs must be considered and can be significant. 600 millimetres to 1 metre of compacted clay is typically required. This is installed in 300 millimetre loose lifts. Each lift must be dumped, spread, mixed, compacted and tested. Before the next lift is placed, the surface of the previous lift must be wetted and ripped to ensure integration between layers. Here you see the surface of a compacted clay layer. The cracking or desiccation occurs when the surface dries out. These cracks can form leakage paths, decreasing the sealing performance of the layer. Particularly during installation, but also throughout the life of the landfill, the moisture content of the clay layer must be carefully managed. A geosynthetic clay liner is 10 millimetres thick. The clay between the two geotextile layers provides the sealing characteristics. The complete GCL provides the equivalent impermeability of one metre of compacted clay. The composite lining system is key to the containment function. However, a number of other components play important roles in the walls and base of a landfill. From the bottom up, the existing subgrade must be prepared. This involves compaction and rolling to smooth the surface, and drainage systems are installed. The geosynthetic clay liner is then placed directly onto the compacted subgrade and the geomembrane placed on top of this. A geotextile layer is then placed on top of the geomembrane for protection. It prevents the next layer, the drainage aggregate, from puncturing the geomembrane. The drainage aggregate is made up of crushed rock, usually 300 millimetres thick. A second geotextile layer is used on top of the drainage aggregate. This separates it from the waste and allows liquid to pass, while preventing fine-grained material from entering the aggregate layer and clogging it. A GCL is being rolled out on a prepared subgrade. Adjacent rolls of GCL, in white, are overlapped to ensure there is no leakage around the edges. The geomembrane, in black to the left of picture, is then placed on top. Wrinkling of the geomembrane during installation is a problem, particularly in hot climates. Wrinkles reduce the intimate contact with the layer below and risk creating drainage paths and compromising the system. To achieve a high quality installation, sometimes the geomembrane is rolled out in the cooler time of day, or even overnight. It is anchored at the edges to prevent wind uplift until the next layers can be placed. The lining system used on a landfill side slope is similar to that used on the base, but has some key differences. To maximise void space, Designers try to get the side slopes as steep as possible. However, this creates other challenges to the lining system. It must withstand a greater downslope force from landfill contents. It must be anchored at the top of the slope with sufficient strength. Individual components must be chosen to provide sufficient interface friction. A gravel drainage layer is often not practical. It will simply fall down the slope. 